Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Code with Ease by Varsha. So based on the recent community poll, we are doing this video on understanding how to implement OAuth 2.0 with your Spring Boot app. Now, before we go into the code, the theoretical aspects and everything, let us zoom out a bit and see around us from real world perspective, why do we need to learn about this? So I'll tell you about my experience. Whenever I log into some new application, I always look for that button to sign in with Google or with some third party provider because I'm too lazy to sign up. The sign in mechanism is done and I'm able to successfully log in to that app without the hassle of me trying to sign up and giving password and all of that. This is where OAuth is coming into play because you don't have to share the password of your Google account. Still, Google is letting you to log in by giving the least minimum, like the least amount of privileges and this letting you log in using your credentials, not even sharing that with the new app. Still, you are getting authenticated. Still, you are getting access to the new app. So now this is what we will try out completely in a purely backend way. We will try to secure our APIs so that only the user which is authenticated using the Google account can log in and uh, access the API that we want. To. That is what we will do today. That is part one. And in part two, we will also see the authorization thing. Like, for example, I am a content creator. So imagine in my Google calendar, I have set up five days. I have to write five scripts. So I have set up some time for that. So if I write a custom app, which is going to get access to my Google Calendar and Google Calendar is going to allow it and uh, let it access the events that I have scheduled. It is going to see and check for certain keywords and look that look for what what is the script that I want to write about, what, what topic is it. And then based on that app, maybe using, using some LLM, I can just add to generate a first draft of that script. So I don't have to sit and come up with the outline and everything. So in this way, for five topics on which I had to sit and write the script, I have some starting point. So this app is letting me do that because Google Calendar is giving the privileges to that app so that it can, it can access and write the script for it. How cool is this? So this is a way in which you should think about real world projects. By the way, this project is inspired from this project is taken from my ebook which is over here and this has been released a couple of months back so if you're looking for more project ideas you can definitely explore this ebook uh, the link to that is below the code for this tutorial so the code for today's video is also available on github the link to that is in, in the description it is a purely backend driven code no front end is involved uh, so now let's go and understand about oauth 2.0 first Okay, so first of all, let us understand what is OAuth 2.0. I gave you the real world perspective first, but now the traditional definition says it's an industry standard protocol. It just says, says it is the industry standard protocol for authorization, which will let the apps access user data from other services securely without sharing password. We have just discussed about that. How not, how by not sharing the password, I can still access the user data and also I can do the authentication. Okay. So this is what is being, uh, so this is what the purpose of OAuth 2.0 is. And like I said, it will allow the users to grant, uh, it will allow users to grant the third party applications like Google, Facebook, GitHub without sharing the login credentials. So OAuth 2.0 is the industry standard protocol for authorization. It is helping us to grant the th third party applications, limited resources, limited access to the resources like we just discussed. And we will see that also uh, with the Google account without sharing uh, my credentials. So without sharing the credential is the main highlight. Why should you care? Because if you want to implement social login, okay, wherein you don't have wherein your users don't have to sign up, like I said, they can use their existing social accounts and sign into your app. And also using this uh, accounts, you can also, the second use case, which is there that if you use this third party uh, APIs, okay, on behalf of the user, like I gave example of the Google calendar, using the APIs, you can also access the necessary information that you want, like in this case, the events from the Google calendar, and you can do some uh, custom business logic on that. Now, when you access it, you get the secure tokens and then you can do the necessary business logic that you want to do. So these are the two important reasons why you should learn about this. Key terminology. Now, when we start writing the code, actually, when you start 
writing the code before even that before that uh, when you try to read the docs you should be able to understand the terminology so these are the things which will be mentioned in any kind of doc for example today i have given the demo with google account tomorrow if you want to try the same thing out with your github account then you should know what the terminology is right so one is resource owner you are the user okay you are the uh, uh, owner of the google account or the github account so you are the resource owner client of course the app that you are building who is requesting the for the access authorization server will issue the access tokens after authenticating the user so in this case google is issuing the access token after it is authenticating the user now these two things are important authorization server and resource server so authorization servers work is to just grant the token to you but resource server is uh useful when for example the calendar example which i gave in that case google calendar is the resource server which is having actual data that you are requesting for okay an access token like i said the secure token which is uh, given to you today what are we doing we will add the auth to client dependencies in the spring boot project okay we'll set the redirect uis uh, uris we'll see that and then we will have the spring security configuration and we will do two things public access to some endpoints and we will secure the private endpoints with oauth to login i just also want to take you guys through this sequence diagram just as we have discussed over here okay we have the user who wants to log in this is the client application so it will redirect to the authorization server as you can see google and resource service the google api so if you can just hit pause understand this resource diagram i am not repeating it this is basically going to give you a flow of what is happening behind the scenes so now with this let us now move to the id for the code okay so into the id we are using 3.5.0 spring boot version we're using two dependencies over here auth to client and web so so for people who are going to start this fresh you have to go to start.spring.io over here spring initializer select the language project and the version and here you can add the dependencies for web as well as for auth to client so once this is done download the project and then come back to the id so this is what the opom.xml is about simple next we will go to the application dot properties now see this very carefully the port is something you can change according to you and this port number is going to be important we are going to see where we will use this then the client id and secret client secret so how we will get i am going to show you so these three properties are important but as you know we are dividing this demo into two parts one is we will secure the rest api first and second we will see how by giving the different scopes we can access only that much information which google server is going to give us the google's resource server is going to give us okay uh now to generate the client id and client secret what do we need to do is you have to go to google developer console Okay, so I already have console.developers.google.com. In this section, you will see there is something called credentials. You have to click over here. Create credentials. So API key. So we need the OAuth client key, the client ID. So over here, you have to click, and you have to select the type. So in this case, it is web application. You have to give it a name. then authorized redirect uis this is where you actually have to give your port number and the endpoint in which after authentication google is going to redirect you to so this is important so that there is no malicious redirection now this effects will take 5 minutes to uh, take into effect so i have already created the client id so i am going to show that to you see this is the name of the application here we have used that port number when you are deploying it on a server you have to give the server's uh, fqdn but in this case since we are running it locally this is my port number and this is the endpoint this is the endpoint login slash auth to slash code dot slash google so this is the e redirect uri which you have to capture and you have to input over here and then save it so this is once you do this see the client secret and everything is going to be uh, will come as a pop up now over here what are the things is if you go over here this you can download it as a json 
so here you can see that the client id and secret is visible okay so you can download the json or you can just copy from here and put it so i'll just copy this and i'm going to put the client secret as well okay so my client id and secret is very similar to like your username and password i'm going to talk about the third property later on so once this is done now let's go to the config security config like when we're using spring security you want to customize which endpoint we want to be permitted which we do not want etc so we add request matches so over here two endpoints we have which we have said that it needs to be authenticated only then we can permit it using oauth to login so since i'm using oauth to since i'm using spring 3.5 uh, version so there are certain methods which will be deprecated you would see something like this so you see the oauth to login without parameter uh, is the deprecated one so if you're using lower version you may see that this works but again if you're using to 3.5 version or 3.x version basically here then you have to pass it something like customizer dot with defaults one common mistake is if you add this and if you do not define the appropriate properties in the application properties it will not work another thing is in the application properties see this entire property how it starts is spring.security.oauth2 that client so we are defining who is my oauth2 client and we are registering that client so here it is google as i said third party provider can be anybody it can be github also so then this google the word google will change to github so this you have to understand what property you're using and why you're using and when to change it so if you do not have these properties and you keep the auth to login customizer with default it is going to throw an error so this is one common mistake which people do so that is why sequentially form should be fine then the property should exist create the config and at last you create the controller so uh, coming back to the config so we have whitelisted these two endpoints and we are saying that we will authenticate it so now let's go to the test controller so i have two endpoints let's ignore the profile and private this one as of now very simple public endpoint which means no auth to login is needed private endpoint since i have given over there in the security config which means we need to have auth to login like the person should be in uh, authenticated using auth so this is the very simple plain and simple project so now let's run this and see this in action So the server has started on 8076. Let us go there. The first, no, let's first go to the public endpoint. So we can see that there was no authentication needed. Now, the moment I change this to private, okay, so this is basically to simulate the condition where you have your internal APIs and you basically want the user authentication to first happen and then only redirect the user to the internal content so here i am being asked to log in using my google account okay so i'll choose that you see now it has authenticated and it is showing me the content of the private endpoint So I hope with this much you are understanding the difference between the public endpoint and the private endpoint, how the private endpoint has been protected and secured using OAuth 2.0. Basically, without the user getting authenticated, using the OAuth 2.0's uh, framework, the authorization framework, we are not allowing him to access our internal endpoint. Just as any new, any just as any application would anyway do that, right? So this is what the mechanism is. How can you implement it in your Spring Boot application? This was part one. Now coming to the part two. Now what I want. So coming to that example of giving permissions. So I have my Google account, and I have my Google account in my Google account. I also have my email account. and google also has access to my profile details okay so let's say i want to 
no my profile details okay this is just a very simple example you can just extrapolate this to any kind of use cases that that resource server is going to give you details about the profile which you want to show in in your app for example you may want to pull the image that you have in your google account and put it on the app okay you want to show the user name the name of the user right when the user has logged in you want to show the name of the user also so these details are not in any db these details are in the resource server of google how will you get access to that so that is the reason coming to the properties i'll just end the server now so coming to the properties here we have defined what is the scope of access so we are saying give me access to profile and email okay and once we have done that now I will go to my test controller and I'll comment out these two methods and I'll explain to you. First, I'll comment out the profile. So over here, we are saying that whoever is the authenticated user, okay, use that, uh, whoever is the authenticated user, this will be stored in the OAuth2 user, okay. And from there, I'm going to get the attributes. If you uh, see the implementation, these are the different implementation it can be oauth2 user if you're using oidc it can be oidc user as well so whatever framework you are using so based on that you can get the attributes you can get the authorities and everything so i'm going to get the attributes and also now i'll comment out my private endpoint like this so now what i want i want to show the name of the user who has logged in earlier we were not showing the name okay so suppose I, at one corner i want to show the name so now I'm going to do that principal dot get attributes to principal dot get attributes dot get name. Why we have written like this? We will see that in a moment. So now with this changes, now let us run the server. Okay. So now I'm going to get the profile API first. As you know, in the security config, even any malicious user trying to attempt a profile API is not going to work. So we have to authenticate. So on hitting the profile, you see we are getting all these details in which we have name, family name, picture, etc., email, etc. So this is why you saw that in the controller I had used principal.getattributes.getName. Now I'm going to hit the private endpoint so that I can see if the name is coming and that is here you go. The name is coming. Right. So this is how we saw two things. First, securing the REST API using your OAuth and after logging in, giving necessary authorization like the necessary permissions, uh, granting authorization to a specific set of so scopes so that it can access those and get only that much information. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so that is what this video has was about. Uh, I hope you guys have got some value out of it. And the code is going to be available. The ebooks link is also given tagged to this video. You can explore that ebook also. And uh, let me know in the comments how do you find this video and uh, share it with your friends, whoever can find it useful. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.